say that to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Father God, give us clarity, authority, clarity, speak. Let us speak to thy people, this royal priesthood, this chosen generation. These that do and approve the king for their sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Thanking God that he has kept us. We have come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord and trusting in his holy word. We pray that you all have been safe. Amen. During this time of the plague. And we pray that God will have mercy upon mankind. Amen. And that he will give us some kind of relief of this virus. Amen. Just take the time. I want you to get your Bibles. We're going through the book of Philippians, the third chapter, verses 1 through 15. Thank God for Lady Harris who's with me today. Amen. She will be reading Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, indeed it's not grief, but for you, it is sin. Beware of the dog, beware of evil workers. Beware of the incision, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinks that he has thereof, he might trust in the flesh. I the Lord. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal. Persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things we gain to me, whose I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things for loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and who count them but dumb, that I may might win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto death, if by any means I might attain unto right resurrection of the dead, as though I had already attained, either whether already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brother, I count not myself to be apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. God bless you. Thank you, First Lady. Amen. In the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul, the one, who was, the one who was arrested on the road to Damascus, and God chose him to deliver the gospel to the Gentiles, who are you and I, amen, of a loving Savior who loved us and who died for us, amen. And in the book of Philippians, the third chapter, the very first one, it says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. One thing I want you to understand is whatever you do, don't lose your joy. Don't lose your joy in the Lord. Don't lose your trust in the Lord. The Bible says that we should lift up holy hands, not only in the sanctuary, but we should bless the Lord at all times. His praise should always and continually be in our mind. Our souls should make a boast of the Lord, and the, the humble should hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. We should be a point in time that we would never lose our relationship and understand who God is. And understand that God has called us not only to live a holy life, but to be thankful for the things in which he has done for us. So Paul starts out this epistle saying, rejoice in the Lord. I want you to know when you lose your joy, you've lost everything. When you lose your joy, you've lost your hope. When you lose your joy, you've lost your faith. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength, knowing that God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works with us. Jesus says unto us that we should have joy unspeakable and that full of glory. So Paul reminds you and I, the Christian, first of all, to rejoice in the Lord. And he says, 
not grievous to me to write this unto you. It, it should be in our DNA. Amen. We must always have our joy in the Lord. You may be at home during this pandemic, but get you some good music. Amen. Get you some people around within your household. Put on you some gospel music and begin to glorify and magnify God from the depths of your heart and your spirit. You cannot praise God, magnify God, and be sad at the same time. Amen. He tells us in this here, verse 2, beware of dull, beware of the work of the, beware of the concision. Amen. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Don't let anybody get your mind off of what you should be doing with Jesus Christ and having that inner fellowship with him, that intimacy with God. Amen. Everybody don't savor the things of God like you and I do. Everybody don't trust in God like you and I do. Everybody don't go to the rock that is higher than I when they are in trouble. But you and I know where our help comes in the time of trouble. The Bible tells us we should look into the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Amen. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. I tell you today, and I've told you always, church, the biggest problem I think in the church today is not the absence of teaching, is not the absence of good music, is not the absence of Bible study, because we know we have a whole lot of that going on. You can get uh, scriptures 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But the biggest problem with the church today, in my opinion, is the absence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Most people are not filled, filled with the Spirit of God in their lives. Most people have not really been born again, but you and I are those who have been circumcised and worship God in the Spirit. For the Spirit of God is in us. The Holy Ghost will allow us to lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. The Holy Ghost will allow us to have melody in our hearts with the Lord, harmony with our hearts and our hearts with the Lord. So the Holy Ghost, Paul tells us, we are those who worship God in the Spirit. Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I the more. Paul goes on to tell us that we should not put any confidence in the flesh. We should not put any confidence in our flesh. This flesh will never be saved. It will never be sanctified. Uh, it will never want to do what's right. That's why the Spirit of God is in you gives you power over the flesh. Amen? He that walks in the Spirit should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I want to skip down to verse 13. And it says, Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and stretching forth into the things which are before me. Paul, in this verse, becomes a man who is on a mission. His mission is to see Jesus Christ. His mission is to apprehend him that apprehended Paul. Paul says, I want to get the verse. verse. Verse 11 says, For by any means I might obtain the resurrection of the dead, that I might go let me get my glasses on here. Not as though I've already obtained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Paul was on a mission. You and I should be on a mission. Come hell or high water, seek or swim, we're going to go with Jesus. No matter the bad mind, no matter the good times, the bad times, no matter what comes. You must have your mind made up that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You are a strong soldier in Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You have had to have that mindset that no matter what comes your way, God is your supply. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down and breathe pastor. You must come to the point that you and I are going to trust God. Paul had a one-track mind. Verse 13 says, Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into the things which are before me. Paul says unto us, 
Now I want you to take quick attention to this here. Paul tells us we got to forget the things which are behind us. Yesterday is gone. And really tomorrow is not promised to you. But since yesterday is gone, we can't look back at what we used to be, what we was, where we came from. But we got to keep our mind focused on the prize. And the prize is salvation and eternal life in Jesus Christ. Paul in verse 5 says, he gives his, his pedigree of who he was. And a lot of times people think because people are movie stars and because they are whole positions in, in, in a high office that that means something. But that really don't mean anything, saints. That don't mean anything. Because the truth of the matter is, what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? The only thing that really matters is your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're not saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and have a, a, a desire to do the work of God and understand the great commission that God has given us, then you're living a life in vain. Jesus said, many should come to me in the last day and say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not done many good works in your name? And he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I want to tell you something, saints. We got to stay laser focused. Our mind is be like, be like a flint rock. We have got to remain laser focused on seeking Jesus Christ, keeping our garments clean. Because again, hell is a bad place to find out you made a mistake. A lot of people have a, a form of godliness, but they buy the power of the Holy Ghost to live a holy life. We must live a holy life. We must be laser focused on winning souls for Jesus Christ. This is a great time in this pandemic time through this plague time for us to get ourselves together, seek God the more in prayer, seek God the more in our praise and our worship, take more time to go through the Bible, read some things out of the Bible, study the Bible, get an understanding of God, let God open up your understanding and your knowledge of the Word of God, draw close to God, and God will draw close to you. Paul said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. I'm forgetting the fact that I was a Pharisee of Pharisees concerning the law, I was blameless. I'm forgetting all the things that I suffered for Christ, but I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. If we live this life, if we live this life and there is no resurrection, we are most of all most miserable. But Paul tells us that he wants to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Understand that Paul was called into the third heaven and saw things that was not lawful for him to utter. He understood that God was real and Christ was real. And so Paul, since he understands that, he said, I'm seeking for a city not made by hand. I'm seeking to see him who have apprehended me. I want to lay hold on Christ as Christ got up. I want to get up. As Christ got up and rose from the dead, I saw him for myself. I've been into the heavens of heaven. And I understand that there's life after death. So Paul says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. And I'm reaching forward to those things which are before, which are before me. You can't live on yesterday. Yesterday is gone. And tomorrow is not promised to you. You need and I need to be seeking the one who saves us, the one who sanctifies us, the one who delivered our soul from hell. We need to see the one who has blessed us and gave us the precious gift of the Holy Ghost which seals us with, this, with eternal life, which seals us until Christ comes again. This is what we must put our trust in. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. Paul says, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God has called all men to be saved. God has called all men to be holy. God has called all men to receive the gift of eternal life. Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and where I am, ye may be also. Oh, people of God, we've got to trust in God and tell, let people know that God has given us inheritance. He said, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither have it entered the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for you and I that love him. God has a city not made by hands. 
The end time is here. We can look at it. We can see the signs of the time in Matthew 24. We can see the signs of the time of the plague, the devastation, the money, the collapse of everything around us. We got to understand that God is getting ready to come. Jesus is standing with the archangel. Gabriel is getting ready to blow his trumpet. We've got to be prepared. Don't be like the five foolish virgins. Go out and party. Forget about God as if God don't exist. Be like the wise virgins who kept their lamps trimmed, who kept themselves in God, who kept themselves in fellowship with God. Wait for the promise of the bridegroom. And when the bridegroom knocked on the door, they was able to go in. And after they went in, the door was shut. Don't live your whole life and fall away now. Mm, glory to God. Paul said, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God has called us to be delivered from eternal separation from him. Eternal separation from him. And cast into the lake of fire to live and burn forever because of your lack of faith and trust in waiting on God. He said, now let us therefore, that many be perfect, be thus minded. Paul is saying here, if you are a mature Christian, you really know God. Have this main mindset. Wait for the promise of the Father. For the dead in Christ shall rise first. O people of God, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. God has given us a time right here now to see that he is in control. We don't know whether we're going or coming. But my mind is fixed. My heart is made up. I'm going with Jesus. The world is all discombobulated. They're falling apart. They have no hope. But our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our hope is in our loving Savior, our Messiah, our Deliverer, our Waymaker, our soon-coming King. So I tell you today, hold what you got. Hold what you got. Jesus is the Lamb of God, our Lord and our Savior, and our soon-coming King. In these days, in these last few days that we have, we must fast even more. God has given us a time to fast and seek his face. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. If you're doing this here, the saints of God is praying, we all get together, God will have mercy on planet earth. But take this time to pray more, to fast more, to seek God's face more, to keep on reading your Bible. Fellowship with one another, call one another, encourage one another, hold on, for the end is soon to come. And God is ready to give every man, every man, every woman, according to the, to, to the power that's in them and the working of their hands, their gift of eternal life. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God bless you. God keep you until we come again. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Amen. With some new update. Amen. As to the opening of the church. Some more information. God bless you. And I'll be right back.